Welcome to Sheboygan County Government, working for you. My name is Adam Payne, County Administrator and co-host of this program. We've been doing this program now for 13, 14 years, and normally next to me you would see our fearless leader, the County Board Chair. But instead of next to me today, he's across from me. We're doing something a little unique this month rather than a a department head or a key employee that we're looking for information about roles and responsibilities. We thought, you know, it's time this community better knows who's at the helm, who our ch chief elected official is. And Chairman Distruti, it's, it's good to have you across from me today. Welcome. Thank you. Good to be here. Uh, Roger's been on the county board for nearly 30 years, uh, 29 years to be more specific, has served in a lot of capacities with the county board, has seen a lot, has been part of a lot of incredible improvements and has a, a track record here that's that's uh, you're going to find very interesting. So let's get right into it. Roger, please share a little bit about your family, your family roots. I'm sure I grew up on a family farm uh, three miles west of uh, Cedar Grove and my nephew still lives on the farm and uh, he's the uh, seventh generation that's lived there and uh, I grew up on the farm, uh, we, the farming operation and um, always uh, could look back to the, the roots in the community. We've lived there all, all our lives and uh, on and on and uh, got a little bit interested in politics because my, my father and my grandfather would talk about local things and always had an interest. And my great-grandfather actually served uh, on the town board and the county board in the same district that I, I do right now. And he served in the uh, late 1800s and uh, the early 1900s. And I've been fortunate enough to serve in the late 1900s and into the 2000s. So between the two of us, we've got four centuries covered uh, with, on, in that, uh, as county board supervisors. So it's an um, incredible track record in yep. public service in your family. So grew up on the farm and yep. whereabouts is the farm? Uh, just uh, three miles west of Cedar Grove on uh, the intersection of G and uh, Six Mile Road there. So. So, so as you look at your career, you, you didn't move far from home. No, I, I may be about uh, five miles away, but still live in the town of Holland. And uh, I represent the village of Cedar Grove and the town of Holland uh, make up the uh, population for my district. So, And unlike a number of our county board supervisors who are retired right now. Of course, mm -hmm. we have a, a diverse county board, but I think most of them are retired. You're not, you're fully employed. Where, where are you working? What are you doing? Uh, I'm the DPW director for the Town of Holland uh, Highway Department. Uh, we have 56 miles of road we take care of, and uh, we contract some of the services. We, uh, we get the county to plow our snow and uh, do some of our black topping, but we look for the best uh, best bargain wherever we can and often we get the county as they are the low bidder for some of our uh, jobs. So, And we both are married to nurses. Of course, yes. we have fond uh, and fond memories and a lot of respect for, uh, for certainly being married to nurses. You're a family man? Yes, I have, uh, have uh, two daughters. Uh, they're uh, Anne and Linda. Anne has uh, two kids. Uh, she's married and lives out in uh, Hilbert on the family farm from her uh, husband lives there. I have two grandson, uh, grandchildren, uh, a grandson that's eight and a granddaughter that's three and uh, lots of fun and uh, we get together as often as we can. Yeah. Okay. My wife is also, or both of them are nurses, my, my daughter and my, and my wife, both RNs, uh, both work in the intensive care uh, area in their uh, hospitals, uh, Sheboygan Memorial, my wife, and uh, Appleton Memorial, my daughter, works out there. My youngest daughter, Linda, uh, is uh, attending Lakeland College right now, and uh, uh, she's nearing her uh, second degree, so we uh, support her as much as we can. Very good. Well, very good. So uh, deep roots in this community and, mm -hmm. and obviously a, a long track record of public service in your community. What was it that made you decide to run for county board in what, back in 1984? Yes, um, actually uh, a fellow that I worked with at the time was the current county supervisor, 
then current county supervisor of the area. And uh, he knew that I was serving on the town board at that time. And he asked if I might be interested. And I asked him what some of the duties were and the time frame and things like that. And um, then actually uh, there were two other candidates. So I ended up having a primary. And uh, I came in second in the primary. But then in the general election, uh, I was fortunate enough to uh, come in first by a pretty good margin. So it uh, made me feel pretty good. And one of the reasons that I, I aside from I was encouraged to do it, uh, there, at that time there was a concern that uh, some were suggesting that we should have countywide zoning. Mm -hmm. And that was not of any interest to the local municipalities because Elkhart Lake is different than the town of Holland or the, or the town of Scott is different than the town of Mitchell. Everything's just a little different. Certain things, local communities know what, they, what they're interested in and what their citizens want. And the always local control is, is always important to me as it was back then. So, yeah. and that's some, those are some of the reasons that I originally ran for it. So the local control obviously continues to be important yes. to a lot of people, including mm -hmm. the county. Um, so 1984, 29 years on the board, and I, mm -hmm. I know we have some viewers out there who obviously don't have your knowledge and appreciation for the roles and responsibilities of board members. Please give us just a high-end snapshot. What is the role of a county board supervisor? Well, first and foremost, to try to represent the best you can the, the people that you represent. Some have different interests than others, but still the overall common good for the county is is in everyone's interest, but you still have a feel for what your people are interested in. So that's what you should, uh, should try to represent the best. And each of us uh, is serving right now, pretty well all of us are serving on two committees, a couple of them won, but that was by choice and uh, that's how it, uh, the, it, it shook out for everyone. Can't get on two committees, but very close to, to that, so. And each of us has that committee assignment and one or two. And then uh, at least once a month, we have a full county board that uh, the committees report to their resolutions and, and uh, ordinances that, uh, that we all vote on. Now, when you hired me 14 years ago, you and the executive committee, there were 34 county board supervisors. Yes. We now have 25 county board supervisors because the mm -hmm. board took it upon themselves to reorganize and right size. Uh, but when you were first elected, were there still town chairs on the county board as well? I know at one point we had like 60 some county board supervisors. Um, as I remember uh, being told that in the 60s, uh, then uh, there were each, um, for instance, each village and township had the chairman of, uh, say, the town of uh, Sheboygan Falls would automatically be the county board chairman from that municipality. And um, that seemed good enough over the years, but it did not give you equal representation because, for instance, uh, a village of Waldo would have one representative and uh, the village of Howard's Grove would have one, but maybe two to three times as much population. So in okay. In the 60s, they, uh, the ruling came down that there had to be one man, one vote. So that's why each district has to be close to the same amount of, of people in it as, as possible so that there's equal representation. So that was changed already back in the 60s? Yes. Okay, well before you yep. were elected then. Anyway. Yep. I'm probably thinking of Jim Gilligan, bless his heart, who <laughs> was on the county board, I think, for 42 years. And yep. he since has retired and is no longer on the board. But I can recall him speaking about those days right. when there were 60-some in those county board okay. chambers and spittoons on the floor. <laughs> and it was a very different time. So we've gone from yep. in the 60s to 34 to now 25 county board supervisors. And I think the state average is about 23 right now. Mm -hmm. So we're right in the ballpark. Uh, so as you mentioned, two-year terms, you know, re-elected every two years. You, you have a, a monthly county board meeting. You have generally two committees that you participate on. Mm -hmm. And they'll meet two or three times a month. And as county board supervisors, as policymakers, what are the primary responsibilities? You mentioned obviously uh, representing your constituents, but what are, what are some examples of the work that you would do, action you would take? 
Well, uh, the law committee, I'll, I'll pick one, would, uh, works with the different departments that directly uh, are involved with law enforcement. Uh, the clerk of courts, the, uh, the DA, uh, child support, um, the coroner, I think I mentioned the sheriff, uh, and those are the ones that directly uh, report to them and they react to that and I think the uh, one of the most uh, important things of our our committee system is the details are worked out in each committee and rather than uh, have 25 people try to discuss the details in a large meeting first you get each committee brings in a resolution to take some action that they've thoroughly discussed and worked out some of those details and maybe ask their department head to check on something and bring back some information and react to it at the next meeting so that they get a very thoroughly discussed uh, uh, product to work with. And then once they come out with a resolution or recommendation, then it gets referred to another committee. If it has some uh, financial implications, then it'll get referred to finance or and maybe some serious uh, policy changes. It might get referred to the executive committee, and that's pretty well how it rolls out. So if you're you know, wondering, well, how does the county government operate? Who are the top uh, policy makers or decision makers? Chairman Testruti is the top elected official. So he's elected by his peers, so it shows the respect that his peers have for him when they elect chair. And they have two-year terms, a monthly county board meeting. They may be on one or more standing committees. And as Roger said, the uh, standing committees really have a strong role in our organization of developing policy, meeting with different departments. And they'll take action by passing generally a resolution or an ordinance or a committee report. And I think as you shared, uh, very effectively. It'll go from one committee to the county board, be referred to another committee and back, and it can be a two-month process to make that decision. But the good news is it's a very deliberative, thoughtful process, and more often than not, good decisions are made as a result of it. As you think about your tenure on the county board, what are some of the biggest challenge, bigger challenges you've been faced with? Well, certainly over the years, uh, to try to keep the um the budget and the levy in place. Uh, as I look back, there were a number of things that have, uh, the committees that I've served on, maybe I'll do it that way, that have uh, impacted the county. Uh, one of the committees I first served on was the Resources Committee. Now it's the Pre Committee as we combine some committees, but uh, the Resource Committee uh, first was charged with the airport, and then we uh, as decision makers felt that it was important to make uh, it a standalone department and then we have that it was important enough for the economic development and uh, things going on in the county that we have uh, put more emphasis on the airport and then we hired Chuck Mayer as our, our, uh, our airport uh, manager and he did great things there over the year that was one thing uh, Another committee I served on was the Law Committee. Uh, one of the things that I recall that was uh, kind of a, a change was the rural numbering system. Each township had their own numbering system and it didn't have to make numerical sense. It just, this subdivision had eight houses in and they had eight numbers and there was no pattern to them. To have an enhanced 911, we needed to to uh, have all of those uh, locations uh, documented on a map and segmented so they made sense. So that was a, a challenge to get that through because that was changed. But I think over the years, people realized that was a positive change. Once we did that, we could have the enhanced 911 system that if anyone picks up the phone and uh, they know the location and who responds to that location, what ambulance, what fire, what rescue, and all of those things. Uh, another thing, uh, when I served on the uh, HR committee, we made some changes and uh, did some pretty good things with, the, uh, with our uh, 
insurance self-insured, and I think we did some good things to save the county some money. For the most part, the employees were happy with those changes too. Um, but I think one of the um, most important things I ever did was when I was on the executive committee, we made the decision to get an executive coordinator, and uh, that's when we hired uh, Adam, and I think that was probably one of the best decisions I've made as, uh, as a county board member ever because we felt it's important to have one CEO managing all of those departments. We as supervisors are part-time people and we can devote as much time as we can but we're not there all the time and that's why we needed a hands-on manager to oversee all of the things, the many departments in the county, still set the policy but ask one person to try to coordinate all of that for us and uh, later on we upgraded that to uh, uh, administrator position that uh, gave you more some more authority but we weren't real sure of giving that authority to anyone going to, at the beginning but we uh, grew to uh, appreciate your efforts and we we changed that to an administrator position those are some of the changes on the different committees I've served on I guess if that sort of answers your question there well I'm very flattered by your last example so thank you for that Roger sure. and and, you know, to piece it together, you know, again, Chairman Testrudy, Roger, is the chief elected officer. He's chief elected official in the county and, and responsible for budget development and the, the chief policy maker. So when you're working with 25 county board supervisors, I mean, that's, that's a very challenging role overseeing an organization. And I should have set the stage a little bit better. County government is comprised of a $130 million budget. We have... Uh, 19 departments, about 850 employees, providing programs, and 200 programs and services. I mean, there is a lot going on here. So when Roger talks about improvements he made at the county airport, and for those of you who have been in this community a long time, if you see what that airport looks like today compared to 29 years ago when Roger first started, tremendous improvements at the airport, uh, whether it's law enforcement, uh, planning and resources, uh, uh, working with clerk of courts or finance or human resources. The breadth of responsibility when you're a county board supervisor and working in this organization, one of the things I love about it, and, and I think it's perhaps one of the reasons Roger is here after 29 years, is there's always new things to learn and always opportunities to make improvements and good people to work with. So it, it's been a pleasure. It's been a good team. Um, as you've you know, as you reflect on your history and, and the number of changes that you've been a part of and the improvements that we've made, uh, what, do you, what do you see as, you know, key challenges as we go forward? What do you think are on the horizon that, you know, we need to plan and prepare for? And, and well, I, I, I'm sure the most uh, important thing and the hardest to achieve is to... Uh, maintain our uh, levy uh, uh, under our levy limits that we the state has given us which we've exceeded those uh, requirements but still it's it's gets harder and harder each year to uh, to maintain that uh, the services that the people want and uh, we've made some hard decisions over the years we have to make priorities just as anyone in their their household budget. There's a lot of important things that need to be done, but some things really should have more attention than others, and and then something has to be cut. We have to make uh, decisions on that, and we've, for the most part, uh, done that well. A lot of discussion sometimes, but we've always come to the uh, the decision that the majority wants, and I think the, the majority of the people wanted us to make. So, I think that's one of the harder things, maintaining our budget and keeping the services up that the people are used to having. And I would wholeheartedly agree that the county boards reduced property taxes for the last six years. We probably have one of the best, if, the, if not the best, fiscal track records in the state if you compare us to the other 72 counties. And it's in part because of thoughtful leadership from Roger and other county board supervisors. and department heads and a team of employees that are just working so hard and, and striving to be the best they can be and we're 
we've made a lot of tough decisions with streamlining and consolidating and, and, and in some cases uh, privatizing. You know, Sunny Ridge was a monumental decision made a number of years ago and, and a difficult one for the county board, but helped position us for success. And of course, Sunny Ridge is, has been fine ever since. Um, the county board has gotten more diverse of late, Roger. Uh, as, you, as you think about your tenure on the county board and look at the faces on the county board, what do we normally see for competition? Do many people run for county board? And if not, why? Um, there, there haven't been a lot in the last uh, maybe five, six, ten years, but I think that's probably because for the most part uh, things are going pretty well. And uh, there were times over the years that there were more competition, sometimes controversial issues drew out that competition and some different uh, views on that and some people uh, ran against specific issues and that's maybe where there was more competition at the time. But uh, for the most part, there isn't a lot of competition. But, uh, but I, again, I think that's because for the most part, uh, people are satisfied with, uh, with our best efforts. Not that everything is, is just the way they want it, but they realize that, uh, that we have to make some decisions and not always uh, appreciated by some, but we feel the best that uh, we can make for the good of the, all of Sheboygan County. And as you know, we're always striving to improve and leadership skills can always be improved, whether we have 25 existing county board supervisors or 19 department heads or, or new ones coming on board. What type of leadership development or opportunities are there for county board supervisors to gain a better appreciation for the breadth of county responsibilities, the programs they oversee. Uh, what types of things have we done over the years? I, I think one of the most important things that we've done, and not exactly sure when that started, I'm thinking 12, 15 years ago when we started our leadership forum. Uh, that's always held in June. Um, and one of the original reasons we started it was uh, there always is some turnover, and at the beginning of the term, then some of the newer members uh, can get uh, a very intense uh, explanation of some of their duties and what the overall view of the, the whole county. We're each on specific committees, but that's a chance where we get an overview on the entire county operation so we don't just think of the committee that we're serving on. It, it can't all go to that committee. There are other needs uh, throughout the county, and that's explained well. We get different speakers in. We get some of our department heads, alternate them at different years, and explain a little more in detail to our, our entire group what's happening in the, the highway department or the sheriff's department or, or the finance or IT or some of these things that they get a little better uh, snapshot view of what's going on so that they can appreciate uh, the details of their committee and that's important but they also have to agree what's uh, understand what's going on throughout the entire county and i think it's probably been one of the reasons our budget process has been so effective is we have such a collaborative effort here and as you said we've had those annual leadership forums we actually host them right here at at uw sheboygan right and we take nearly a full day and the county board comes together and already in March, April, we're looking at our projections for our next budget. And, and then in June, we have that leadership forum where the full board can come together and see our fiscal outlook and see the challenges and, and look at the county more as a whole rather than through the silos of a specific committee. Uh, I think for the most part, our board does look at it as a whole, but as we both know from time to time, if you're, if you're on a committee and if you've been on the committee for a long time, you may be predominantly concerned with health and human services or you might predominantly be concerned with the sheriff's department because your liaison committee oversees that area. But uh, they obviously have to keep all 19 departments in mind and pull that overall budget together. Uh, it's been pretty effective for us. And of course, you'll, you led that discussion last year and you'll be leading it again here soon in June. What's been most rewarding for you as, as county board chair as you, as you look at your tenure on the board? Well, I don't 
maybe not just as chair, but I think one of the most rewarding things is uh, after you've been on, on a while, people sort of remember that you're on. First couple years, they're not sure who their supervisor is or if nothing comes up, they don't know. But after a while, they know they can call you. And uh, sometimes it's simply a question, I got this issue. I, it's not a big problem, but who do I call? Where do I go in the, in the administration building to, who do I talk to? Sometimes it's just a phone number that you can get them to t be able to talk to the right person that can give them an answer for their, their specific issue. Sometimes it's for a person that doesn't have to deal with the county government or any government, they're not sure where to go, but sometimes it's just direct them to a person that gets them right to the heart of the matter they're concerned with is, is helpful. And, and I, I believe that if you live in a small community that you grew up in, uh, people know you, friendships over the years, you bump into them at the grocery store, or at the mini mart when you're filling up with gas at church, they, they just ask you what's going on or I read this in the paper, can you explain that to me? So you, you get the feedback from the people and when you do it's easier to do your job because you, you get that feedback. So I think that's been rewarding that I get the feedback that if something isn't quite the way they want it or what, or if I heal most of the people are saying one thing, then I realize we're, we're going in the right direction. The, the feedback from the people, I think, is the most important part of it. Yeah, and feedback when you've got thoughtful individuals representing you and, and helping you and helping make your community a better place. Well, that 30 minutes flew by quickly, and I learned some new things about my direct supervisor, County Board Chairman Roger Destruti, and. I hope you did as well. If you have more questions about the roles and responsibilities of being a county board supervisor or have suggestions for improvement for our organization, don't hesitate to contact Roger Destruti directly or certainly your represented, your county board supervisor that represents you. All of that information is online. You can go to the Sheboygan County website and see who your representative is. But uh, I hope that you enjoyed this overview and got to know your elected leader County Board Chairman Roger Strudy a little bit better. Thank you for taking the time to, to share this insight with us today, Roger. Thank you, Adam. Next month, we're going to switch roles. I'm going to be in the hot seat, and Roger's going to be sitting here and asking me a few questions about my experiences as county administrator the last 14 years, and I'll share a little bit more insight about my family and, and my perspective. But until then, thank you for joining us today, and we'll see you in a month.